What is up, everybody? Welcome on back to Wake Up War Chant. This is also a standalone video. Corey Clark and myself joined by Derek Nadi, Florida State alum, Kansas City Chief. will be uh, playing in his third Super Bowl this next Sunday here. Uh, Derek, thanks so much for joining us, man. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So, Derek, you've accomplished so much in your, your short career here, man. You're 26 years old, and you've been in the league for five years. Again, your third Super Bowl. Uh, but, you know, I check out your Twitter, man, and all of the great things that you've accomplished that you could kind of, like, showcase – uh, and the image that you have uh, pinned to your Twitter, or your Twitter rather, uh, is a photo of you in a Florida State jersey, man. Uh, what did your time in Tallahassee mean to you, and uh, just how much do you miss playing college football? Man, shoot, being in Tallahassee with the people that I've been around, it kind of made me who I am today. From my, from my D-line coach to a lot of my teammates that I was still close friends with, uh, like I said, it transformed me into the man I am today. I learned a lot of lessons, a lot of hard lessons. Um, I would always, any chance I would have, I would love to go back and redo it all over again. What is, uh, you, we hear so much about Odell. Um, everybody that played for him uh, has so much to say about uh, o Odell Hagens and just the kind of person he is, what kind of coach he is, because he's not your friend when he's out there on the football field with you. What did you learn from him? How how much of a stark realization that th my life is different with this guy coaching me when you were a freshman in college did you did you get like oh man this is gonna be different this guy's different he's gonna stay on me for three or four years oh man oh my gosh Odell Coach Odell see one thing about him he always made sure you stayed focused on the little things it was always the little things with him uh, funny story rookie year and I mean freshman year and I'm going I'm going through it with uh, Coach Odell it's it's not fun not at all uh, they got because it, it was always either. He was going to yell at you even if you were wrong or whether you was right. If you was right, he's going to yell at you even harder. He might do make you do the drill like two more times just to make sure it stays with you. Like, it was so bad. I would be in training camp, and I'm having nightmares of him just yelling at me. And I wake up in the middle of the night just like, yo, is he here? I swear, he was wrong. <laughs> like, it's, like, but he go, he's going to be on you hard because he always he cares about his players. He cares about his uh, players in the D-line room or, or on the team overall. He really loves the people he's around. And he makes sure he hold he, everyone's being held accountable. So I tip my hat off to him because without him, I went from football wise, I wouldn't be where I am today. Life wise, I wouldn't be where I am today. It's crazy too. You think about like Timmy Jernigan, Fabian Lovett, who's still on the team now, guys that were your class, guys that came ten years before you. You all have this. You're all like in this same fraternity that y'all were coached by Odell. Like the wide receivers, the quarterbacks, they were all your teammates, and I'm sure you love them and you, you have fun with them, but they don't know what you guys know about football practice because they weren't coached by Odell. How cool is that when you see any defensive tackle in the league or you see any Florida State defensive tackle from yesteryear to be able to relate to them because y'all all went through the same thing? Man, it's so cool because I remember uh, I want to say <clears throat> after one of my good friends, the Marcus Christmas, after his first year in the league, we just kind of just were kicking it in the off season, and we we're just talking about. I'm like, man, everything that Coach Odell really tells about this league is absolutely right. Uh, and we just started laughing because he would all, every other day, or every any other week, we'll be in the meeting room, and he'll he'll stop. Um, we'll be watching film. He'll stop and like he'll be like a, a quick minute, minute thirty minutes or whatnot. It's like, yeah, let's talk about life real quick, and we'll go just go into detail about things and just life and things in the league, things to be prepared for, what to, what's going to happen, what to expect. And and in that time, I'm going to just shake my hand like, man, what is what is this man talking about? Like, okay, I get it. You want best us to be prepared for whatever, but you, I feel like it's kind of a reach. But the very second I get in the league, I just observe everything. I'm like, wow. He was absolutely right, man. So it's just it's, it's, it's great to have a teacher to prepare you for everything on this next level. Derek, when you enrolled at Florida State, you had a, a real good quarterback at the helm. Uh, and now that you're in the NFL, that you uh, you were able to have Patrick Mahomes uh, run the offense. Uh, for you as a, de a defensive player, uh, you know, Florida State's quarterback now, Jordan Travis, has a little bit of magic in him, much like Patrick when it comes to escapability. I know you guys are always worried about getting off the field three and out, but what does it do for you as a defense when you know you have a guy like that playing quarterback? What did it do for you as a freshman to know that you guys had Jameis uh, what has it done for you being in the NFL knowing that you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes uh, helping the cause? Well, my freshman year, when I was still just learning anything, it was um, 
it was definitely a big benefit to having a quarterback like James Winston to rely on on the opposite side, knowing that uh, on when we're on defense and we get a quick three and out, we know in our minds, boom, he's no, I know he's gonna score immediately the second gets the ball. So it gives us a lot of motivation to really just keep punching at it, keep punching at it, and allow the offense to do what they gotta do. And coming to uh, going to another NFL, having a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, it's really the same thing. It's like the same formula. You gotta go in knowing who's on you, who's who's on your team, who's on the opposite on the offensive side, and you know, okay, when we, they get on the field, they're gonna score. We gotta put them in the best situation to allow them to do do their thing. So we're fighting even harder just to allow them to produce. When you so when you joined the league, obviously uh, Mahomes had been there for a year. Um, I can't remember. Did he play as a rookie at all, or did he not? He didn't, did he? he so that. his first year was your first year. Did you know, like in practice in August, um, like man, this guy because Jameis was already a Heisman winner when you joined the f- program. Mahomes hadn't really done much of anything. Did you know, like in August, like wow, this guy, this guy isn't normal. This isn't normal what I'm seeing. I have a story for you. So <clears throat> I always think about this too. So it was my, it was my. Like I said, it was my, my freshman my rookie year. And, you know, as everybody who plays on the defensive side, there's a bubble around the quarterback and you don't get into that bubble. Right. So I'm I'm chasing the quarterback on because I, I was uh, – it was some little T game. I was, I'm in contain. I'm chasing him down. And I'm at a certain point where I'm like, okay, slow down, but you can have your hands up. And the whole time I got my hands up and I'm slowly, like, getting my hands down to it. I, I did everything, let him throw up. He does his signature sidearm throw between my arms, straight to Kelsey. And I look back, I'm like, what in the heck? I'm looking at him, my coach like, nah, you got to run the ball. I'm like, did y'all not see that throw? <laughs> like, I'm looking, I go I go back to my room and look at the play. I'm like, yep, that's my arm. There's the ball. I'm like, this man really thread the needle elegantly. I'm like, yo, this is an amazing kid. This is an amazing football player. Goodness gracious. <laughs> And it wasn't just like a one one trick thing in practice. Like he does it in games. You you saw immediately that this guy that this guy was different. And I just overall, how cool is it, man? That you know, you, I know your last year at Florida State didn't go well, but b- before that, you guys won a ton. And then you go to the NFL and you're winning every year, lots of games. That must be just the coolest thing because it's hard to practice every day. It's not an easy sport, and it certainly beats losing. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, it just goes to the it goes to the foundation of this organization. It goes to the what the like yeah, the foundation of what we build on what our standards are and we gotta go by by those standards. So every time we go on this field, go into the building, we got work to do. So we come here, we go to work and we show the fruits of our labor our fruits of our labor on the field and show what we've been doing on, on practice from Tuesday to Friday. So it just all goes back to how much we love this sport, honestly. Will, will you be nervous on Sunday? Do you get nervous? I mean, it also it's also your third Super Bowl, but I assume there's still always going to be a little nerves before a game this big, right? Or is it just old hat to you now because you're in them every year? Um, I mean, when I first went, the first time I went to the Super Bowl, this is a long answer from it. So, like, the first, I've always told myself and going through college, um, being trained for these type of um situations that so you got treated like any other game focus on focus on what you what you got focus on like uh the great uh what was his name i forgot his name but the quote is be where your feet are keep the main thing the main thing so okay. when that in my mind going to the super bowl like i did my first time and the second time i just stayed locked in on what i had to do treat it as any other game but of course there are higher stakes but you still just gotta stay focused on on your target so focus on what you gotta focus on Derek, have you been able to uh, talk to Josh Kando about, uh, you know, his time in Florida saying and how much more exciting has it been this past year? Were you able to follow along at all and at least walk into the, the, the complex a few times this year and feel really good about uh, where this program's at right now? With Kando? Yeah. Man, shoot, I've been talking to him since he got drafted here. <laughs> shoot, my locker's right next to him. That's my dude. And we all, like, especially with, with things with Florida State, we all be talking about everything that's going on from every single week, like, okay, we see uh, us doing well against LSU. I'm like, yo, we finna, this this is the year for real. I'm telling you, this is the year. And as you can see, they did their thing. I'm so proud of them because that, oh, my goodness. Like, 
when I saw the LSU game, I was like, you know what? This could be a good year. We're going we're have a winning season. We're going to the bowl game. I'll take my word to the bank. I promise you. And they just kept producing week after week after week. Even if it was a lose, even if they lost the game, it was a close game. That's all I'm like. We we this we're going somewhere. We're still going up the hill. Well, how they say is the climb. So I was like, you know, this could be a great year for him. Do you have any relationship with Coach Norvell? Have you have you been back to Tallahassee since he's been the head coach here? No, I have not yet. Um, because how our off season is right. It's, it's so it's it's a short window. So a lot of times the second our off season is over, I'm going. I might stop doing. I might make take a little break for maybe two weeks, and I'm going to practice training. Oh, and I was going to ask you that. So you 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 played a a 17 week season. Uh, you're about to play a third playoff game, so this is 20 games plus exhibition plus August. What what do you? How do you let your body get a break? Like, what do you allow yourself to be like? All right, I'm. Is it? You said two weeks. Can it be a month? Can it be six weeks? When do you go back and start lifting again and start training your body again? After two weeks, because uh, I know our window is so short, and like by the time we're done after the Super Bowl, OTAs is coming back, coming up really fast. So. I gotta be reasonable and just be like, okay, give yourself two weeks of just not doing a single thing. Just sit on the couch, you can play video games, you can do at the most, I'll be like, okay, I can do some yoga, low maintenance things, but not just, just to get more stretch and recovery. And then after two weeks, I go right back into it. So not a trip to Cabo or anything, man? You're not going to you're not taking a vacation? I'll be honest with you. I took my first vacation last year. Where'd you go? And was it yeah. fun? Oh, we was in Jamaica for six days, man. It was amazing. Nice. Nice. That's fun. Are you going to try to swap jersey with Josh after the game, Derek? Josh Sweat with the Eagles? I mean, if he wants to, that's true. I, I mean, how the games normally are, some people will be a little upset. Some people will be still be um, up-spirited. Uh, it really depends how he feels. How much does it would it mean, man, to get a second one? I mean, look, you you're in rare company. You pl you play in the NFL number one. There's only one percent of the football players do that, or less than that. You've also already won a Super Bowl. But a guy that's won two Super Bowls, well, there aren't many of you guys around. How how exciting is this prospect and this opportunity, man, to go back there and get you and get you another one? Oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, as much as I want to just always be thinking about it, I can't think about it. You know. I want to be more focused on what I have to do and not worry about the end result was at the end of the tunnel. I got to go through the process of getting to the end of the tunnel. So I stay focused on my, on my, on the prize, you know, like I always say, heart and heart and eyes on the prize. We stay focused on our targets. So you focus on what we have to do. We'll get to the end of the tunnel. So I don't even want to worry about that right now. I wanted to ask you one thing real quick, and this might be my last question, but that, that state farm commercial where Andy reads on the plane, uh, I, they play it way too much now, so it's not we don't care for it anymore, like necessarily. But he's a really good actor in that when he throws the. Have you taught? I mean, is he the kind of coach that you can go up there and joke with him about something like that? Do y'all even bring it up as a team? Because I thought he nailed it. I thought he was better than Mahomes and the Jake from State Farm guy in the commercial. Um, yeah, honestly, Coach Reed's a really cool dude. I, you know, being on the defensive side, I don't really have that many conversations with him. Right. Do. He's really cool. I feel like on the offensive side, they would joke around with that. Yeah. Uh, personally, but I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Derek, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions, but real quick, uh, just, you know, naughty dogs. Can you talk about this whole thing here? You know, I think you started back in 19. Every single uh, time you guys won a game, you would, you know, cover fees for adoptions for dogs. And I guess after the Super Bowl, you kind of covered everything for a shelter. I mean, how important uh, is it for you to to help out these uh, these foster dogs and kind of give back in that way? I mean, I'll, I'm always been a dog lover uh, since I was a kid. Even though we couldn't have pets in the house, but I always knew like when my friends had pets, I'll always help out and like just raise, help raise it, teach it tricks, or I just I'll take it for a walk. She's like, man, let me take it. I'll take it for like 20 minutes. You'll come back and be tired and happy. But uh, for the you know Casey uh, for uh, adoption dogs, I always had a little just a little love for animals, especially uh, when I got had my first dog, uh, Rocky. His personality is very timid. He came from just a, a bad breeder, and it just made me it's made me help me sympathize for a lot of animals uh, that don't have didn't come from his situation. Because I'm like he came from he came from a breeder. I'm like man, that's really how is that 
he came from a breeder and he's feeling just as bad or even maybe less as bad for a lot of uh dogs in the shelter. So I'm like, I want to help out a lot of these animals because my do- my dog's going bad, feeling bad. Like he's t- he was timid. He at one point it was it was sad, but it was adorable. Like when I was back back in Tallahassee, Stan mm-hmm. Shaman saw walking down the little gravel lot. I'm walking with him. I get to the bottom. He's still at the top of the ramp. I'm like, yo, what you doing? He just looked at me and crying. I'm like, what's going on? He turned around and run. I'm like, well, hold up. You can't run in the street. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was, <laughs> he he was he, so he's he's nine a day. Thank the Lord, man. But it just made me just really think about a lot of dogs that are in a, a, a lot of shelters. I just wanted to help. That's real. I, a lot of things what I do. I just, I just be wanting to help just, just to help. You know, it just kind of goes back to my debt, my father saying about, you know, naughties. We don't receive, we give. So a lot of times I don't even think about it. I'm like, oh, they need some help. Bet I got you and keep it moving. You know? Nice, nice. All right. We went into overtime here. So we're going to make this really quick, Derek. It's going to be speed round here. Uh, we should be done in a minute if we do this right here. Got to be honest, though. Please be honest with us here, Derek. First question. Did you know when you got drafted that Kansas City was actually in the state of Missouri? No, I did not. There was two of them. I did not know there was two. <laughs> That's fair, man. I, I'm with you. Oh, uh, where is your Super Bowl ring right now? I will not say, but it's somewhere protected. Okay, very good. <laughs> That's smart. What's the best bowl gift you got when you played at Florida State? Oh, I had a long, I had a ease, uh, a recliner. You could charge your phone in, and it had a little cup holder. I loved it. You got a recliner from a bowl? Yeah. Wow. I, I, it was. It was. I had. It took four points. I had. I had eight. I was like, let me get that. Let me get the speaker with the subwoofer, and I'm good. Nice. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, Derek. How good is Kansas City barbecue? Ten. Last I question. Game. I love Q Q39. Okay. Last question. You have to be honest here, Derek. Where is more loud? Dope Campbell Stadium when the war chants going, or Arrowhead Stadium when the war chants going? Mm. Arrowhead, because sometimes I can't hear what my teammates are saying. Yeah, I, I know y'all gonna kill me for it. <laughs> Look, I will say over there in Tallahassee, it is jumping. A college atmosphere is absolutely loud. But when I was in college, I could still communicate with my teammates. Right. Up here is ridiculously loud. Like I, I'm looking right next, like she's right next to me. If we're on the field, I cannot hear her. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, All so, right. Hey, we appreciate the honesty, man. Hopefully one day we're getting Doke back to uh, where it can be that loud. Uh, but, yeah, they're good again. Finally, Florida State is good again, and apparently you're always going to be good. You're always going to be playing for a winner in the NFL. Derek, thank you so much for taking time out, man. Derek Noddy, Kansas City Chiefs, playing in Super Bowl 58, Sunday, February 12th, 630. Uh, good luck, for man. Time out of a really crazy week, man. We appreciate it. Good thank luck, you. buddy. Good luck, Derek. Bye. Thank you.